Hello, good evening and welcome. My name is Dr. Marie Morris and I'm delighted to invite you to our online information session on two of our master's programs. Our master's in science in advanced clinical practice, which is a part-time master's we run over two years. And then we have our master's of surgery, which MCH by module, which you can take full-time over one year or part-time over two years. So we have designed these programs very carefully to support your career developments as a non-consultant hospital doctor, and also to support your lifelong learning and your professional development as an academic clinician, a researcher, and an educator. Our agenda for this evening is to run through the advanced clinical practice masters, the masters of surgery by module, and we'll also discuss and share information on key timelines to ensure that you apply early for this for these two innovative programs. So the Masters in Advanced Clinical Practice, what we'll look at is the eligibility criteria. I'll run through the structure of the actual, the entire structure of the Masters program, the content of the various modules and the learning outcomes that you will achieve if you choose to study this program with us. Or CSI's part-time MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice is a fully flexible postgraduate medical program aimed at supporting the career development of non-consultant health doctors at all stages. Learning outcomes from this program include becoming a well-rounded advanced clinical practitioner within your field in order to enhance your medical CV, elevating your knowledge and expertise of advanced practice through carefully selected modules which will provide you with a structured clinical teaching and training experience. Developing your key skills and critical understanding of modern day clinical practice in order to progress into new roles within your specialty. Championing key advanced practice competencies to the benefit of modern day patient care, which include evidence-based research, leadership, education and clinical practice. So just to give you some background on my interest and involvement in the Masters in Advanced Clinical Practice, um, I really enjoy this Masters because it aligns with my core values as a clini clinician and educator. So I spent the last 35 years in clinical practice and clinical medical education. Um, and my areas of interest are very much along the uh, in the areas. No, I've got that stumble. I'll start that again. Two. Okay. So I'm delighted to lead the Masters of Advanced Clinical Practice because it aligns very much with my areas of clinical practice and research. So medicine obviously is a team sport and, and learning is also a very social encounter. So I'm really support the development of peer assisted learning and peer support and development of a community of practice so that you have a network uh, within your clinical practice that you can gain support from while you're studying uh, your master's program. I've also studied over the last 30 years and have always worked full time and studied part time. So I do totally understand the challenges you face when you're studying part time, as well as holding down a full time clinical job. I also really promote uh, a mindset really of deliberate collaborative practice so that you gain the support of your peers and that you don't feel isolated when you're trying to work and uh, run research projects. So I'm delighted to align with it and still align with this program. OK, so the Masters in Advanced Clinical Practice is quite unique. Um, we very much are aware of the, you know, the wider context in which you practice medicine today and also the multiple roles that you play within your within your clinical practice. You know, you're a leader, you're a manager, you have to have insight into quality assurance, your practice has to be ethical and legally bound. You often have responsibilities for innovation. You need to understand the wider context of global medicine. Um, um, and all of these roles you you play are often part of your job, but you're not formally taught how to actually advance these skills. So this program addresses that. Um, and we also have access to 
a number of national and international subject matter experts that deliver the content, which we're delighted that one of our current students has, a, has addressed that in, in his testimonial, that he really enjoyed the high standard faculty and quality that he has received on this programme. So the programme is a level nine. So level nine is part of the national framework qualifications in Ireland. This particular programme is part time, so it runs over two full academic years. It starts in September and runs right through to June of two years later. It's blended learning, which is quite common now post uh, the pandemic. So by blended learning, what we mean is it is a blend of face to face as well as online teaching. Predominantly, the teaching is synchronous. And by that, I mean the lecture is live on the call on the online call so that there can be interaction and questions and answer sessions. Um, it's 90 credits, part of the European Credit Transfer Scheme. And there are three compulsory or core modules that everybody will undertake. And then you are required to take four further modules um, and you have a choice of eight. Um, so you can, uh, the, there is flexibility with regards to choosing topics that are really interesting to you and your clinical practice. There are potential funding streams available, which we'll cover at the end. And our next intake starts in September 2023. The MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice is open to all non-consultant hospital doctors in Ireland within non-surgical specialties. These specialties include, but are not limited to, radiology, anesthesiology, general practice, emergency medicine, pathology, public health, occupational health, and all general medical specialties. So the module breakdown for the Masters Advanced Clinical Practice, we have three core or compulsory modules. Which these cover healthcare ethics and law, which obviously are fundamental for your clinical practice. And there's a module on research methods, which in, involves the uh, development of a protocol, design and analysis. This also includes a good foundational introduction to research. So although some research experience is desired, you will be taught the basics of, of undertaking primary research. And then so these both run in year one of your program. And then in year two, you have a research dissertation, which is 30 credits. This to, and, and these uh, accumulate to 55 credits. So these modules also are available in the Masters of Surgery, the MCH. Um, but the, the Masters in Surgery has a, a larger research component of 45 um, ECT credits for the research dissertation. Then, as mentioned previously, you have the option then from eight modules, you can choose four. So three of these modules will be 10 credits and then one five credit modules. And this brings you up to your 90 credits. So within the MCH, the credits are slightly different, but the module content is available across both master's programs. So this is where you have the flexibility to choose topics that are of particular interest to you. So if you have specific interest in teaching or advanced communication um, and developing your leadership skills, then you can choose those modules. I would say from experience, um, undertaken a number of postgraduate courses, I would suggest that you do as many of your optional modules in year one um, as possible, because that then leaves you year two to really focus on your research dissertation. And certainly if you're new to research, I would be inclined to give myself the most amount of time possible for the research dissertation. But the flexibility is that you can choose which year you choose to do your optional modules. Um, so that, that, that gives you that flexibility to choose what suits you. And there's a nice array of topics there that you should interest. You know, a lot of people will have different interests. There are three core taught modules on our MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice programme, which are mandatory. These include our Research Methods Protocol Development, Design and Analysis module, which is 15 credits. The Healthcare Ethics and Law module is 10 credits and the research dissertation, which is 30 credits. Our part-time programme also includes eight optional modules, whereby scholars must complete a minimum of 35 credits from the modules available. For more information on the optional modules, please visit orcsi.com forward slash MACP.
OK, so we'll have a look at your core compulsory modules and then we'll look at the optional modules that are available to you. So healthcare ethics and law obviously is a fundamental module uh, within your clinical practice. Um, and we this is led expertly by Professor David Smith, and it gives you a really good understanding of the ethical and the legal issues involved in your healthcare and also in healthcare research, which is important. And obviously, as clinical practitioners, you have indemnity insurance. So it's really important to understand what the actual law is underpinning any um, ethical dilemmas within clinical practice. So it's a very interesting and useful module. So that's that's why that's a, a core module. We then have our research methods, um, which I said will, you know, previously will give you a really good introduction to research methodology and research design. As part of this module, you will develop a research protocol and learn how to design and analyze the protocol. It's led by Professor Tom Fahey, and an expert in, in research methodology. Um, and this is a really good approach to research methods, I feel. A research protocol is a very useful um, tool to have developed. It helps you, obviously, initially develop research skills, but also you have collated all the content that you would need if you are going to apply for ethics approval for a research project. So you're able to populate the application form quite easily. And equally, if you're looking to have healthcare funding and apply for any grants, the, re the protocol, research protocol, again, will have the content that's required for most grant applications. So it's a very, very useful assignment um, that you you have multiple potentials to use. And then your research dissertation. So within the MACP, the Masters in Advanced Clinical Practice, this is a 30 credit module. And within your, if you do the Masters of Surgery, that's a 45 credit module. So the, the requirements from the research is obviously greater for the Masters in Surgery than it is in this particular module. Now, again, in this module, you will learn how to plan a research project and you have a number of options. Um, so you you can write a scoping review of the literature. Um, or you can plan a quality improvement or you can actually extend your research protocol into a larger study. You can also um, design and implement a primary research project. What's very important is that it is a novel project. It's a new project and that it's your project and that you're doing it um, as part of this research dissertation. Um, so you have a number of options um, that you can choose which way you'd like to present your research, which I think also is very flexible. Many programs um, don't give the option of how you wish to do your dissertation. So I think many of you will find that really quite helpful to choose something that's that's of interest to you. And this module is led by Professor John O'Byrne, our program director. OK, so once you've completed your, your three core compulsory modules, you then have a choice of another three 10 credit modules and one five credit module. Um, so within those optional modules, one of these modules, uh, 10 credit modules, is a new module that we designed for this program this year, which is clinicians as educators. So as we mentioned earlier, you know, your multi roles uh, as a clinician and a researcher and an educator. Um, is, is part of your core clinical work. So we designed this module to be a, a very flexible, practical approach to clinical teaching. So how to how to teach small groups around the bedside, how to plan a lecture, uh, how to plan your program, how to get some feedback on how good, bad or indifferent you are as a teacher, and just how to develop yourself and the professional identity as a teacher and an educator in clinical practice. Then we have um, and I, I lead that particular module. And then Dr. Mary Collins um, lead, uh, leads out on a, an optional module on leading your, your service and your organization. So again, giving you some insights into the different leadership styles and your leadership style and how you lead and learning from others and how and the approaches they take to leadership. And again, this involves all these modules involve multiple teaching strategies and assessment strategies. Um, so that you've got flexibility and variety um, in the approaches to the teaching and the assessing um, and uh, and access to experts, uh, subject matter experts and international leaders in the, in the field. So they're very contemporary and current. Again, we uh, another very interesting module is medical technology and innovation. And this is led by Dr. David Matthews, 
So this is a really nice module that gives you an oversight of you know, coming up with a concept or an idea of an area in clinical practice that might be able to be improved through technology, potentially designing something, um, going to prototype and or bringing things to market. And um, it's a really, you know, you can see firsthand some improvements in patient care um, from very simple ideas that were designed by clinicians in practice. So it's very hands on and it involves the College of Art and Design. So it's, um, you know, it's, it, those of you interested in, in innovation and medical technology developments will find this a particularly interesting module. I would like to introduce you to a new module, uh, one we are particularly excited about, which is medical education. So it is teaching the clinicians to be educators. We have all experienced during our training that a lot of what was taught to us was taught to us by doctors a little bit ahead of us in the training program. And then as it goes on, we find ourselves in a situation of training those clinicians and healthcare professionals who are behind us. This module introduces the student to actual teaching techniques and assessment techniques and allows you to improve your role and your ability to teach. Okay, so another optional module um, for 10 credits is professionalism and advanced communication. As you'll know, communication is a pivotal, fundamental core skill um, from clinical practice. When we look at medical error, um, la most largest proportion of medical error and complaints is related to communication breakdown rather than technical ineptitude. So this is a vitally important module. It really helps you also in your daily roles, you know, trying to negotiate with different departments, negotiate with different teams, other healthcare professionals, um, things like breaking bad news, disclosing error, all of these advanced skills um, that can be taught and can, um, you know, be something you can perfect and make your jobs more easy and less stressful. And then we look at quality assurance and healthcare and how to, you know, run through and, and deliver quality uh, service, how to audit the service that you're delivering and be part of a, you know, the audit committee. And audit is a really important skill set and you get to get some insight um, into the, you know, the, the importance of quality assurance in healthcare. So and that's led by uh, Mr. Porrick Kelly. And then one of the five credit modules uh, ran by Mr. Eric O'Flynn gives you some context of healthcare in lower and middle in income countries, also looking at sort of humanitarian issues and just looking at the you know feasibility and the financial uh, exposure and uh, in working in different healthcare systems across the world. So it's again a very interesting module. And we also in collaboration with UCD have two um, modules for those who are interested in orthopedic or rheumatology, musculoskeletal um, care of patients in various healthcare settings. Um, and these have been developed, um, you know, with regards to the assessment of these conditions um, in some in interventions, some diagnostics and um, to better understand and manage musculoskeletal illnesses and, and uh, limitations. Um, and so you can choose one or both. Of, of these modules if this is an area that's relevant to your clinical practice. And we do uh, very much enjoy the partnership with our students. So we do evaluate with our students regularly um, the content of the modules um, and seek advice and input from students on new modules and areas that are developing clinically that would be relevant. And we will continue to develop this program and add further optional modules each academic year. Um, so if you come on this program with us and there are areas of clinical practice that you feel a module would be useful to help you and support you in your work, we would delight, we'd be delighted to work with you to design these modules and ensure that this master's remains contemporary and, and assists you in your clinical practice. Okay, so in conclusion, we'll look at the learning outcomes that you will acquire should you choose to study this master's with us. So at the end of this master's program, 
you will have developed your leadership skills, your management skills, your teaching skills and your research skills. Um, most definitely, and these will all be um, demonstrable competencies that, that you will acquire um, by the end of the two years that you won't have demonstrated at the start, which is really good. We we'll teach you also at master's level, it's very much about moving away from basic descriptions to being a, having more critical analytical approach, um, which will is a skill set that will work with you to achieve across all of the modules and to help you, you know, formulate some evidence-based decision-making from a number of information sources and being able to take this complex information and actually translate it into something meaningful in your clinical practice so it doesn't just remain a sort of theoretical concept, that it is actually something that you can take and practically apply in your clinical practice to ensure that you remain a safe practitioner. You'll also, at the end of this program, be able to lead out on some quality improvements projects within your own clinical settings. You could also instigate some audit um, to improve anything that you feel is, is relevant. You'll have all the necessary tools and skills uh, to be able to do that as part of your professional development. Um, within the clinicians as educators, um, we'll, you'll develop a professional pr profile as an educator, which will also help your professional identity as an educator and we also support you um, to develop a community of practice of, of medical and surgical educators so that you have each other as a, as a team member and as a support in clinical practice. Really important skill set that you'll um, achieve and improve across the whole of this master's program is this, uh, an improved self-awareness, being able to reflect and self-evaluate and constantly identify gaps in your knowledge and skills so that you continuously grow um, and you know achieve the best for yourself and your own academic and professional growth which obviously helps you be a better team member and better team player and ultimately ensures safe patient care um, so that's something that will be supported across all the core and optional modules so as mentioned that you will construct a comprehensive piece of research. Like I said, it needs to be primary research. It needs to be original for you that you haven't done it previously. Um, but again, you know, if you plan well, if you have an area of interest um, currently and that your team is currently looking at, you could write a, you know, a very robust scoping review of the literature and most definitely should strive to have that published in a peer reviewed journal. Or you can also expand your research protocol, as I said, and use that for an ethics application or for funding applications. So it makes sense to plan and to get the best outcomes from your research um, so that it's something useful for you clinically going forward in your career rather than just an assignment as, as part of your master's. Again, one of the sort of life skills, which you'll do intuitively as you as you progress across your career is to start to think independently and explore and critically analyze your clinical area. And again, through the uh, medical innovations module, you know, you may suddenly notice things clinically that, you know, could be improved and, and maybe something that you could then work as a team to design and, and implement something new. So it's just being more aware um, of areas for improvement in clinical practice that will have been highlighted over the course of the master's program. And obviously within the professionalism and the communication skills modules, we would support you to continue as you do to act professionally. Um, and to support you to improve some of the more challenging communication skills that you probably encounter on a daily basis in your healthcare practice. Um, and by being more confident and competent in having these challenging conversations, uh, it makes your work life less stressful generally. Okay, so that's an oversight, an overview of all the learning outcomes. So just to conclude, um, it's really important that if you are interested in doing this program, specifically if there's some of the optional modules that really appeal to you, that you apply early uh, in the process ahead of the, the closing date. Some of the pro some of the optional modules, we have to cap the numbers because it, it requires small group learning and small group interactions and, and small group work. Um, and so some of these modules fill up very quickly. Um, so I certainly would recommend to you that if you have 
an interest in the program and there are specific modules that you absolutely would choose out of the optional suite of modules that you apply early. Uh, that would be very, very important. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this useful. I'd be delighted if some of you chose to come on this program and work with us as a team. We really look forward to working with you and, and supporting you over the two years of your master's degree. Um, and I'm delighted to hand over now to my colleague, Professor John O'Byrne. Thank you, Dr. Marie Morris, for providing such a comprehensive and insightful presentation. The MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice has been developed to support the career development of non-consultant health doctors in Ireland and includes an array of highly important modules for medical professionals. I would now like to introduce you all to our established MCH Master of Surgery by Module program. My name is Professor John O'Byrne. I am the director of the MCH by module run from RCSI. This program has run for many years and is geared primarily towards surgical trainees at different levels. There are two broad parts to the MCH. There is 50% of it is modular, where we have a series of different modules which are taught and there is some self-directed learning. The second component of the MCH is a thesis using original research uh, as a substantial research thesis. The MCH uh, can be taken over one year full time or two years part time. And we have in the past uh, understood that a lot of surgical trainees have huge professional demands as well as personal demands. So sometimes students have taken longer than two years to complete the program. The program uh, in its essence is about improving your professionalism in an area that's not directly clinical, uh, but allows you to develop professional skills which we believe will end up with you being a more rounded clinician. And one of the important things to emphasize is that we've had surgical trainees from almost all the surgical specialties. And uh, universally, the feedback uh, that we get from students, many of whom are consultants now, uh, has been one of uh, very, it being a very rewarding experience. The largest module and the most significant one is the research methods and methodology. In this module, you are taught exactly how you should carry out research properly. This allows you to either develop that yourself and carry out research, or it allows you to uh, interpret research projects that you see. This is hugely important in terms of how you will develop and grow your clinical practice in the future. The next module is leadership and management, so leading your organisation. And in this module, the student is taught different principles of how organisations work, a really key skills that you will need and that you will use for sure in your professional life. The next module is in medical ethics, and in this, the, the student will tease out different ethical challenges that present to the clinician in their practice. The next module is medical device design and innovation, hugely important. You are the future of the specialties. Uh, any innovations you have, it is very important that you understand how you can develop them and how you can bring them on and if you get an idea, how you need to act on that. And the final module is surgery in the developing world. And this is for those trainees who uh, feel that maybe in the course of their professional life, they will contribute uh, surgically or professionally in, in an area outside the Western world where we are currently training. Then the second part of the MCH, and a really substantial part, is your thesis. So this, because it makes up 50% of the masters, is a really important part to it. Um, so therefore, when you are developing this, initially you will present the proposals to the faculty. The idea, the design, the strategy, the feasibility will all be discussed with the faculty and with the rest of your class. And it will usually be approved and on you will go to do the research project. They can range from meta-analysis, systematic reviews, to basic science research, to clinical research. And we encourage the students to bring their own ideas. Uh, if they don't, there is a pool of ideas that we can introduce to the student. And um, the whole atmosphere is one where we monitor and supervise and take care that the, the research is being done in the correct method and occasionally it does happen that you haven't recruited enough patients or this the project is not finished within the year or the two years uh, 
but if the quality of the research is satisfactory, then that meets the requirements for a thesis. Um, over the years, we've had many of the students do very successful theses that have been published in very high impact journals. So my name is Professor John O'Byrne. I am the Programme Director of the Masters of Surgery by Module, the MCH by Module Programme, which is available on a full-time basis over one year or a part-time basis over two years. Uh, my own background is that I am the Professor of Trauma and Orthopaedic Surgery at RCSI. I am also a consultant orthopaedic surgeon uh, based predominantly at the National Orthopaedic Hospital in Kappa. We set up this program in 2009 with a view to it providing a comprehensive preparation for trainees in research methodology and how to carry out sound, solid research. The other modules have also been developed to supplement your pre preparation for professional life. This uh, program, the Master of Surgery MCH by module, is the first of its kind in Ireland, and the aim is to equip scholars with a combination of research skills and practical knowledge of the healthcare environment. This is in order to enhance opportunities for professional development. Multiple departments at the RCSI have contributed to the development of this module, and in fact, have developed it and delivered the module. And each module will introduce new areas of learning. Many resources will be made available during the delivery of these modules. However, the overall success of the program will also depend on the drive and in the, in the enthusiasm of the scholars. The class comprises people from different backgrounds and experience. This ensures a rich mixture of expertise, thus providing for healthy discussions and case studies. The program aims to give surgeons in training the opportunity to explore areas of professional development that are not specifically addressed in any current higher specialist training program. The addition of a taught component equips scholars with skill sets that cannot be adequately developed through research alone. Scholars will continue to develop practical research skills and originality in their research as a result of exposure to new subject areas in the taught modules, which will encourage scholars to explore surgery within the greater healthcare context. This program greatly benefits medical graduates planning a surgical career in obtaining a higher degree in surgery. This program can be undertaken before, during, or on completion of a structured surgical training program. The one-year full-time program requires the completion of 90 ECTS credits based on taught modules and a research dissertation. Students will complete the taught modules in the first part of the program whilst preparing a research protocol for the dissertation in the second part of the program. The two-year part-time program requires the completion of 90 ECTS credits based on taught modules and a research dissertation. It is expected that students will complete the taught modules in the first year of their program. The lectures will be delivered in a mix of in-person in RCSI and online. In the second year of the program, Scholars will prepare their research protocol and complete their dissertation. Students can register on the full-time course over one calendar year or on the two-year course. However, once enrolled in the course, if a student decides that they would prefer to complete the MCH at a later date, they may defer the completion of the MCH to a later date within a five-year period of the original registration date. Students can be awarded a certificate of attendance for the completion of individual modules. One important distinction between the MCH and the MSC is the breakdown. Uh, the MSC composes of more taught modules, up to 60 ECTS credits. Uh, the remaining 30 ECTS credits are made up by a dissertation. In the MCH, the taught component makes up 45 ECTS credits, and the remaining 45 credits are made up by original research, which is submitted in the form of a thesis. It is also worth noting that within the MCH by module, 70 credits are made up by the research dissertation, which is 45, and then two of what we regard as core 
modules. The two core modules are research methods and health care ethics and law. The optional modules to, to make up the remaining 20 ECTS credits are outlined down below and in the slide. And it is mandatory, obviously, that all scholars choose sufficient number of these optional modules to make up 20 ECTS credits to supplement the 70 ECTS credits, which are made up by the research thesis and the core modules of healthcare ethics and law and research methods. Your research dissertation, this is a really important part of the MCH. It makes up 45 credits, which is 50% of the MCH. It uh, is very structured and in fact, as, as an initial stage, you will present your proposal to the faculty and to your classmates. At that time, the proposal will be examined, the feasibility of it is looked at, the design of the study, the strategy, the question, the hypothesis, the structure of the study, all of these are examined before you are given approval to continue with the project. It is expected to be an original research project and many of our graduates have published their work in very high impact journals and many, many more, as you can imagine, have presented their findings at different meetings. It is a lot of self-directed work in that you are gathering the data and you are working, uh, preparing the data if you need statistical assistance during the preparation of the data or the analysis of the data, that is available to you in RCSI. There are multiple learning outcomes uh, associated with this module. First one is to understand the major principles of healthcare, healthcare ethics and law and their application to a surgical setting. Second one is to understand the legal regulatory and ethical requirements in the conduct of human subject clinical research. The third objective or outcome is to recognize issues and circumstances in healthcare practice and clinical research that raise potential legal liabilities. The fourth outcome is to understand the frameworks necessary to analyze and critically evaluate claims based on expert knowledge. The learning outcomes also include developing an idea into a comprehensive research strategy, to recognize and manage errors in surgical practice due to human error or medical surgical devices, to analyze stakeholders and organizational culture within the organization or service in which they work, to understand the medical device design and development process from concept to commercialization, to comprehend the role of surgery in global health and policy making, in emerging health systems of developing countries. Uh, key program information for the September 2023 intake. In relation to application timelines, both applications for the MCH by module and the MSC in advanced clinical practice programs will close on Monday, the 17th of July, 2023. We have received a number of applications for both programs already, so we advise candidates to apply as soon as possible to avoid disappointment. For any queries about the application process for either of our programs, please visit rcsi.com forward slash mcht or rcsi.com forward slash macp. Prospective candidates can also send their queries via email to either mch at rcsi.com or macp at rcsi.com. Prospective candidates should also note that funding for both programs is available. Non-consultant health doctors in Ireland working in the HSC full-time may be able to combine continuous professional development support scheme funding and training supports scheme funding to cover up to €2,750 of the cost of a full-time program or €5,500 over two years for the part-time MSc or MCH program. Candidates can check their eligibility for this funding by emailing cpdss at rcsi.com. Did you know non-consultant hospital doctors in Ireland interested about our part-time MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice Programme or the MCH Programme can avail of funding to help with the costs of the programme? 
NCHDs working in the HSC full-time may be able to combine our RCSI Continuous Professional Development Support Scheme funding and HSE Training Supports Scheme funding to cover a portion of the cost of this programme. Non-consultant hospital doctors in Ireland can check if you are eligible for this funding by emailing cpdss at rcsi.com. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, I'd like to again remind you to apply as soon as possible. Uh, and to those of you who have applied and enrolled, we look forward to seeing you in September, where we welcome you and we are really optimistic and confident that you will have a really productive, enjoyable educational year or two years. Thank you.